In this video, we're going to explore the various map implementations available in the Java Util package. So this is a kind of a uh, continuation from my previous um, video regarding hash map internals. Um, also, uh, this I'll try to show some examples where uh, the concurrency can cause troubles in hash map even when we use concurrent hash map and what we can do to work around it. So to start with, uh, in Java Util map, implementations you have so many map implementations I can see as you can see and let's go and inspect the first class where it all began so the first implementation that we know of is java.util.hash table this is the legacy associative array implementation where the first Java uh, release had only hash table this is the time when uh, the collections package was not even uh, existing so at that time, hash table was the only implementation of an associative array in Java. So later on, when collections framework came in, uh, this became like a legacy class because collection framework had hash map implementation. And so um, hash table was retrofitted by implementing map interface. So hash table has a unique advantage uh, in terms of uh, thread safety. All the public APIs on a hash table has synchronized keyword on it, meaning it is thread safe. That means if a thread is currently writing into the map, suppose we are calling put from one thread, another thread which is trying to get something has to wait until the put is complete. So that means it's the whole um, entire map is locked. So um, uh, it's actually, um, you know, appears like a good thing, but it's not really a good thing because it is an overhead in an environment where, where we write the map contents many times uh, in the beginning and later on we do only read see most of the use cases uh, of maps what happens is initially we load a lot of key value pairs into the map and later on we just read out of them we don't really write to them so in that case every read will block any other read that will happen so that is the price you would pay for making each and every method synchronized so that's all about hash table and any given day you don't really have to use hash table in your application programming uh, because you can safely ignore this class from now on. Going on to uh, the most popular implementation of map interface, which is java.util.hashmap. So this um, hash map implementation, uh, historically or otherwise, satisfies most of the requirements for uh, map use cases. And hash map implementation is not thread safe, meaning um, you know concurrent threads updating hash map suppose we have a thread continually putting content and another thread continually reading from that map there may be um, chances where uh, the the reading thread can see um, you know data that was not completely written or things like that so this map is not thread safe the calls doesn't block each other also um, another interesting aspect of hash map is that the iteration over a hash map it's not guaranteed in the order of uh, you know putting the keys suppose we uh, put three key values into a hash map later on there is no guarantee that when we read or iterate all the key set we get the same order of insertion and another point regarding uh, hash map is that it allows you to insert null keys and there are not too many use cases where you would want to use them but uh, that is one of the features that is out there available on a hash map and then uh, if you want to really uh, use hash map in a concurrent environment, only way is to use uh, the all concurrent primitives that you are available of, uh, aware of, like synchronized keywords or locks and things like that. Most of the enterprise applications populate the map once and when they read many times from uh, many, many threads. So given this type of uh, utility, hash map is a very good candidate for uh, your application where you throw in a bunch of keys initially, key value pairs initially, and then later only read from the map. So let's move on to the um, next interesting implementation of a map interface, which is java.util.linked hash map. It's very similar to hash map in the uh, implementation, but the interesting aspect is that linked hash map, the iteration is guaranteed in insertion order. So that means if we insert keys and values into the hash map, Later, when you try to iterate through the key set of the hash map, you're guaranteed to get the same order in which those keys value pair were inserted in the map back to you. 
So uh, this can be used in scenarios where uh, insertion order is some of, uh, of some significance to you. For example, uh, suppose you want to um, load a bunch of uh, employee names from the database and then store some information against those names in the, uh, in, in, uh, in the map. So um, suppose you already have sorted your output based on some DB logic that you want to uh, reflect in the front end. So it's always safe to place them onto a linked hash map so that from wherever you return the list, you get uh, the list in the sense of the list of keys, you get the same order of insertion. So that means the ordering is preserved. So how that is maintained is internally by using a doubly linked list of all entries uh, in, the, uh, in the hash map. So that is uh, an internal extra double linked list is used inside linked hash map, meaning some extra additional space concerns are there, but you know, given the benefits that we get, those can be ignored. So now moving on to the next type of uh, map implementation, which is tree map, which actually implements the sorted map as well as the navigable map interfaces. So sorted map and navigable map interfaces are basically uh, interfaces that uh, guarantees or provides you contract methods based on the um, sorted order of the keys that were inserted into the map. So navigable map also provides you uh, very convenient methods which gives you approximate lookup like you can seal or floor uh, based on the key. Suppose you want to uh, get a key which is nearest to the key that you are looking for. You know that type of operations can be achieved using the navigable map interface. And tree map is the default implementation in the JDK for sorted map and navigable map. So the main benefit of tree map, <clears throat> apart from the um, convenience method that comes from navigable map interface, is that iteration is guaranteed in natural sorted order of keys. So that means you keep on inserting keys into the database. Let's assume we are um, inserting uh, Java lang string keys into the tree map. So, the, so you keep on inserting keys and value pairs. Later you can see that the keys are automatically sorted for you in the way it was uh, it you wanted in natural ordering. So that is a very beneficial scenario where you want to, um, suppose you have a map between um, the country and the capitals of the countries and you eventually want to show the country names in a sorted order. So you don't have to really worry about uh, achieving that sorting instead what you can do is use a link uh, sorry tree hash map tree map what I mean a tree map and insert the uh, country versus capital in whatever order you like but when you retrieve them the keys the key set you get the country names in sorted order so that is the benefit of tree map <clears throat> so internally it uses a red black tree implementation uh, which provides you the sorted appearance of the keys. Now going on to another interesting hash map that we generally don't use in our applications which is java.util.identity hash map. So here in identity hash map the most interesting aspect is that it uses the identity to check the key equality that means it checks if key 1 double equals key 2 instead of calling the equals method on the keys. So this uh, kind of uh, is used in uh, deep copying or a class object is used as a key or things like that. So memory footprint of uh, an identity hash map is comparatively smaller than a hash map um, and uh, it's, it's, it has certain benefits like that. So suppose you are uh, constructing a map with interned strings that means strings that are already out there in the string pool, you could use a identity hash map and save some space. So next um, map implementation that we should uh, know about is java.util.enum map. So enum map, uh, inter, uh, the enum map class definition says enum map angle bracket k extends enum of k and v close angle bracket. So this is uh, a map that takes enum as key and the enum type that you mentioned should 
uh, must come from a single enum type that is specified explicitly or implicitly when the map is created. So uh, another uh, point that we should know is that null keys are not permitted in enum map. So for that matter, null keys are not permitted in hash table also. It throws a null pointer error. So um, enum map is not synchronized. Uh, neither was tree map or uh, linked hash map. Iterator does not fail fast. What does that mean? So um, there is a point called um, yeah, if you have programmed in Java, you would have come across an error called concurrent modification exception. So that what that essentially means is that when you are trying to read from a, a certain um, list or a map, some other thread or this current thread itself is trying to modify that list or map. So in that kind of a scenario, concurrent modification exception is thrown. So the point that you should uh, remember is that concurrent modification exception uh, has nothing to do with multiple threads. It can happen in single thread also. So how uh, that happens in single thread? Let's have a quick, um, <clears throat> quick look using uh, some code and try to simulate a concurrent modification exception. So here I'm going to create a little class uh, called concurrent exception. So here uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a main method and here I'm going to populate a map of string and integer as uh, something like score scores equal to new hash map and then what we are going to do is we are going to place some scores into the map scores dot put I have a key called uh, say user one as a score of five sorry six and I'm going to put a bunch of other users into the map two three four five six seven eight so I will I will put <coughs> eight user data into the scores map now I'm going to get an iterator for the key set so scores dot key set dot iterator returns me an iterator of string user iterator user iterator equal to scores dot key set dot iterator now I'm going to iterate over the user iterator user has next I'm going to just print that um, scores dot get user iter dot next so I'm getting the next key and printing the corresponding value so when I do this suppose I try to add something to the map in the same loop scores dot put user 9 and say 6 and run the application now here you can see that I'm first iterating through the um, key set and at the same time I'm trying to modify the map so this uh, behavior even in a single thread should cause a concurrent modification exception so let's run this example and see so here you go I got a, a java.util.concurrent modification exception exactly at the line um, exactly at the line where I was uh, you know uh, trying to insert the item and iterate over the map key set so that is uh, what concurrent modification exception is but there are certain map implementations that <clears throat> kind of doesn't fail like this so um, so in a map iterator does not fail fast that means if you create an enum map and add some uh, enumeration key value pairs into the enum map uh, and then you do the same exercise you iterate over the keys and then try to put something into the map in between it does not fail like that so that that means iterator does not fail fast now let's proceed on to um, another kind of map that is available in java which is java.util.weak hash map so this is a, a something that we should <coughs> use when you are when we are creating a, a cache or something like that because weak hash map um, you uh, is used to store the keys in weak reference so 
we should know what exactly is a weak reference. So a weak reference is a reference type in Java which tells the, com uh, the um, garbage collector that if the only reference to the weak reference type, whatever is contained in the weak reference, if the only reference is as a hash map key, the garbage collector is free to collect that object. You don't have to have the object hanging around. <clears throat> So that is the um, concept behind weak reference. So in a weak hash map, that means the elements in the hash map can be reclaimed by the garbage collector if there are no other strong reference to, to the object. A strong reference is when you say object, something like employee E equal to new employee, and you put hash map dot put E comma some value, right? So that E is a strong reference because it's an object that you explicitly created and associated. Um, so, uh, at the same time, weak references is that a reference that uh, can be garbage collected if only the reference occur is not uh, not in the form of a strong reference. The, that means, suppose you insert an employee into the um, <clears throat> weak hash map and then somehow the employee goes out of scope in your application, right? So that means the garbage collector is free to recollect or reclaim the space used by that element that you just inserted into the hash map. So the keys that you insert into a weak hash map gets wrapped in java.lang.ref.weak reference. So this is useful only if decide lifetime of cache uh, the entries is determined by external reference to the key not the value. So the value will also uh, get uh, removed from the map but more important that it is focused on the key, the key's availability, if it is a strong reference or a weak reference. So um, in Java, there is yet another type of uh, reference available, which is called soft reference. And soft reference is very much like the weak reference, wherein in weak reference, it is uh, the, the garbage collector can garbage collect the weak reference anytime if the only reference is of weak, weak type. But soft means it is kind of a weak reference type, but the garbage collection will wait until the until there is real need to do garbage collection. Like uh, there, if there is a garbage collection pressure in the um, <clears throat> uh, in the heap. So this weak reference, uh, soft reference, and garbage collection I'll discuss in my upcoming video. But for now, we should know that there is a weak hash map, and the keys are wrapped in weak reference. And hence, if there are no strong references to the keys the garbage collector is free to reclaim that space. And hence, this, uh, this is very useful when you're creating um, cache of values. Um, and that is one of the biggest use of weak hash map. And you are guaranteed some um, you know, cleanliness in your overall application. So in Java, there is no soft hash map. We talked about soft reference, but there are no soft hash map in Java. So we don't have to worry about it. So now let's go and take a look at an example of weak hash map, how uh, the weak hash map would uh, reclaim the space. Sorry, the garbage collector would reclaim the space from a weak hash map. So I'm going to create an example, weak h map example. So here I'm going to create a main method, <clears throat> and here map uh, key value string integer. Uh, say orders equal to new weak hash map. So I've created a weak hash map. Now I'm going to put some values orders. Uh, also, I'm going to put an order class here so that we can <coughs> class order. And suppose this has something like uh, int order id string details. And let's create a constructor public um, order int and id string uh, details and then we associate it to the class phase, class phase order id equals an id and details equals the details so here i created an uh, order just to um, you know demonstrate the weak reference and uh, its benefits. So in orders, I'm going to put 
orders dot put new order of one uh, and some details and some uh, order value suppose the total value we want to mention as hundred dollars or something it's a map of order sorry I, I actually typed uh, incorrect so let's go back and um, inspect the example once more so the example says a uh, map of order comma integer orders equal to new week hash map and the key is of type class order that we just created so I'm putting something into the orders map uh, with new order one and some uh, value to it so I'm creating yet another order key which is order two and say I put another value here so I put two elements into the hash map now what you should know is that see I created two objects here one and two these two objects does not have any strong reference because I don't have any reference objects from any other place other than the hash map keys so that means these two are currently weak references so the garbage collector is free to garbage collect them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and call system.gc <clears throat> and see um, and then print the size of the map and see what is the size of the map orders dot size before GC I'm going to print the orders dot size so here it should print 2 and if there is a successful garbage collection the weak references should go away and we should get a 0 as the size so let's see how that uh, weak reference worked in this example so if you look at this output see first it printed 2 that means two orders are in the map now we initiated one system GC so you should be aware that there is no guarantee that garbage collector would run but looks like it ran in this instance so when we call system GC garbage collection happened and since this only reference for these order objects were only as form of the map keys those elements got collected and removed from the map and when we provided the um, orders dot size again we got zero so that means whatever we hash map uh, contact says has worked so now let's see what happens if I add a strong reference so I'm creating a strong reference order order 3 equal to new order of 3 and some text so I created a strong reference here because even after I put this reference orders dot put order 3 comma some amount so here I added it to the weak hash map but still even after system GC you should know that our main method is still referring to the O3 object in a hard reference, hard reference way so that means uh, it cannot be garbage collected so if everything works cor correctly in this example when we run what should happen is first orders dot size should print 3 because we have 1, 2, three objects added as key and then I call a system GC the weak references should be removed and the strong reference created here which is still needed after the GC call happens should appear in the order dot size as one so now let's run this example and see the output as I said it showed three references two of them were uh, weak reference got garbage collected and then uh, we are printing only one reference which is the strong reference so that is the significance of uh, weak hash map and weak hash map is used as um, is used where we create hash uh, hash hash map of uh, cash values <coughs> that's the weak hash map usage so now let's go to um, the synchronized world or the concurrent world of maps so first a uh, way to get us an instance of a synchronized map in uh, Java is using collections dot synchronized map and pass a reference to already constructed map to it that automatically converts your current map instance into a synchronized map and returns to you so this is like a decorator pattern example where you are adding additional behavior to the object that's being passed to it 
and this map is a fully synchronized map means the return returned synchronized map instance that you get in your hand has synchronized in all its public methods that means all the reads and writes would block uh, the threads that are uh, you know doing some other operations so it is provided as a convenience uh, it's in theory similar to hash table that we have seen the synchronized map and uh, you, you can use or you can not use it and most of the time there is no need to really use a synchronized map and uh, a collections dot uh, synchronized map this synchronized map api call returns you a synchronized map internal class instance and wraps around past map instance as i, I talked about and marks all the apis as synchronized so that gives you complete threat safety but um, um, you know, if you are very serious about uh, concurrent programming, this is not the kind of that safety that you would like to have. So you can um, try to find out more details on the other type of maps, like concurrent maps, etc., and then think of using those kind of maps instead of a synchronized map. So speaking of which, java.util.concurrent has a lot of uh, utility classes that came with Java, uh, Java 5, where the new concurrent uh, modules were added. So java.util.concurrent, concurrent hash map, supports full concurrency during retrieval. That means retrieval operations does not block at all. Reads can happen fast while the writes require a lock. The writes does not require a lock on the entire um, map table. Instead, there is something called segments that are created in concurrent hash map and each segment contains a set of um, uh, buckets in it. So that means um, a write lock may be required only on one segment at any given time and suppose your another thread that is writing into the map is writing to a different segment, it can acquire happily acquire that log, uh, lock and work. So that means even writing um, has uh, very less amount of locking involved. So um, by default the concurrent hash map is divided into 16 segments and you can add 16 threads to write into the um, hash map at a given time. And iterations on a concurrent hash map does not throw concurrent modification exception uh, even within this same thread. So uh, it can be used where um, in, in cases where a lot of concurrent addition happens followed by a uh, a lot of concurrent reads. In a concurrent hash map, null keys are not allowed. So why it is not allowed? Why null keys are not allowed is because um, if um, the map dot get null returns a null object, it is not sure if uh, a null, null is not mapped or if null is mapped to a null value. So in 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 a concurrent map. Uh, in a non-concurrent map world, we could check with the contains API, but in a concurrent uh, environment, values can change between API calls as the APIs itself are not atomic. That means even when you are using a concurrent hash map, you would have to use uh, certain locking or some other techniques to make sure when multiple threads operate on the concurrent hash map, like, you know, suppose incrementing a count or something like that, that kind of use case, you have uh, some good practices in place like synchronizing it or some other couple of techniques that I'm going to show in place. So now let's look at uh, some examples of a behavior of concurrent hash map. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an example class called a concurrent map example. So here what we are going to do is we are going to create a map of um, certain <coughs> world location versus some orders coming from that location. And then from multiple threads, we will update that order count concurrently and see how it behaves. So now let's go and create a static reference to a, a map, which has string of location and long order count and call it as orders. And let's create a new concurrent hash map. So we created a concurrent hash map instance. And let's create a main method where we, we are going to add some um, initial setup to the um, orders. So let's put a key 
called Bombay and no orders have come from Bombay yet so we are putting a zero along and then let's create another uh, location called Beijing and that also has uh, zero orders now let's create another location called London and zero orders now another location New York and zero orders from that location now let's create <coughs> through two threads and keep on incre incrementing the uh, order count in those two threads and see what happens so here I'm going to create um, an executor service executors dot new fixed thread pool of two size two I'm going to create two threads and I'm going to say service dot submit I'm going to say process order method I'm going to add a static method here concurrent hash map example static process orders and I'm going to create submit two tasks that means I'm running two threads in parallel and then I'm waiting for my uh, termination for a second say time unit one second and then I'm going to shut down my service so here what we are doing is we are going to create two threads that will eventually add or increase the orders in our order map so let me provide the process orders API which is going to be static void process orders which is going to um, iterate over the keys so I'm going to say um, for string key or city in orders dot key set I'm going to add 50 orders so uh, I equal to 0 I less than 50 I plus plus I'm going to get city dot get um, sorry map map dot get um, so I'm going to say long old order equal to ma uh, orders dot get the city name and then I'm going to uh, orders dot put uh, city comma old order plus one so I'm going to increment the orders in a for loop <coughs> Uh, and I'm going to do it 50 times so for each city I'm going to place 50 orders per thread and I'm running two threads and at the end of running two threads I should have hundred uh, orders against each city name if everything runs correctly so now let's say add system out println uh, orders at the end so now let's run this example and uh, see what happens in this uh, when we use concurrent hash map and we are running two operations <coughs> on the uh, hash map and we are uh, updating the um, values using two threads so now let's ex run this example and see what happens so at the end of uh, one second I waited for one second to complete everything so I see that hundred orders are present in this map as expected but at the same time um, this is multiple thread environment and there are chances that uh, this can go wrong so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, continually run this example I'm going to go to my command line and using a script I'm going to continually run this example and observe my output okay so I'm going to go to my example project out and look at the class which is in uh, scratch I guess let me find out find out minus name this class okay so that's it so let's go to that path and invoke 
the command line continuously so and see the output <coughs> now we go to the documents workspace example example out production example scratch sorry I gotta go back here and I'm going to say while true do Java uh, scratch dot this name concurrent hash map example and done so this I'm calling infinitely and observing the output so I'm running see first I got 100 100 looking good so far suddenly see what happened here's the surprise I got 52 on Beijing and New York now then I again got a 86 here and sometimes so that means the map is behaving strange or our application rather is behaving very strange under multiple threads so no matter if you use concurrent hash map or any other uh, you know such things uh, you know your application can go and behave real weird way like this okay so why is that because these operations orders.get and orders.put these are not um, uh, atomic operations it has to uh, you know this so it can be easily made atomic if we just synchronize this whole thing here uh, and the calls will wait before one thread can update and at the end we will see the same value so what is the fun in that let's try to do something else right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, to address this problem where we are getting inconsistent output I'm going to use uh, one way to fix this is to use atomic law so in Java uh, I think as of Java 5 these atomic types were <coughs> implemented this atomic type uh, are guaranteed is, is uh, as per the Java memory model specification atomic types um, writes all its change before any other read happens in the memory so given that an atomic long should address our concern here so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new atomic long and do the same for all the other cities I add an atomic long and I cannot do this so what we can do here is order orders dot get key sorry which is city and it returns an atomic long on which we can say get an increment so this is an atomic operation on the atomic long and all the changes to the variable will be published to the memory and whatever threads try to do this again will see the most current value of the atomic long and it should have consistent output as 100 in all the cities uh, when I run multiple times so now let's just uh, do a test run and as you can see in the test run we are getting 100 as the output now let's go and run it in the infinite loop and observe our output so I'm going to keep an eye on this output for a while and as you can see it's consistently printing um, 100 100 100 100 which is very good so this is one of the ways uh, to make um, such operations safe when you use multiple threads modifying some values of the map after getting it so that is uh, using atomic long also you could use uh, the replace API on the um, on the map which replaces um, uh, which returns a true only when it can re uh, the values passed on the parameters matches the current value in the uh, hash map so that is the another API called replace that uh, that helps him to deal with this kind of situations. Now um, let's continue our uh, discussion on concurrent hash map. So what we have seen is the operations on concurrent hash map are not atomic and you should still be um, concerned about areas uh, where multiple threads would um, modify your map after checking some keys or pulling some key and then putting some value back into the map. Those kind of scenarios you should um, judiciously check or use atomic uh, variables as possible as uh, what we have seen. Now let's uh, go ahead and see um, another yet another implementation in Java Util Concurrent is the concurrent skip list map in uh, Java Util Concurrent. What this uh, is a scalable concurrent um, navigable map and sorted map implementation. So this is the uh, equivalent of tree map in the concurrent world. 
So that's uh, the uh, important point of about concurrent skip list map. So it behaves like the tree map, which uh, gives you all the navigable map interface APIs, like approximate lookups and things like that. Also sorted map uh, interface implementation where the keys will be sorted in the natural ordering. So A plus it brings the concurrent uh, behavior, just like the concurrent hash map, where the parallel writes are uh, very rarely blocked and the reads are never blocked. Also, um, concurrent skip list map guarantees average order of log n performance on a wide variety of operations. Concurrent hash map does not guarantee operation time as part of its um, contract. So, uh, one difference between concurrent skip list map and concurrent hash map is that uh, there is no performance uh, contract in the concurrent hash map. Also, um, concurrent skip list map has a performance contract of order of log n in most of the uh, operations. So that kind of concludes the various maps in our uh, Java JDK as of today. So um, in coming weeks, I'm going to publish more uh, videos in uh, the concurrency or multi-threaded programming and some other topics uh, such as garbage collection, which will be of interest. So please stay tuned, uh, subscribe if you like, like the content. Please leave a comment if you like it or if you have any questions or criticism, please leave a comment on that too. Thank you.